Where do I even begin when starting to talk about the year that has been 2020? <laughs> As you may know, I hosted my reading challenge, the Classics Community 2020 Reading Challenge, for the first time this year, and I had grand and exciting plans at the end of 2019. It was going to be the best year ever. I was going to read so many classics. It was going to be spectacular and amazing. And then the world just turned into a nightmare. <laughs> um, not what I had anticipated, but I thought I would talk to you today about specifically my classics reading in 2020, how it has gone, how the year has affected my reading, and also show you some of my classics highlights of the year. I won't be doing a favourite books of 2020 video this year, so this is going to be in its place, mainly because when I looked back through what I'd read, I'd realised that my brain has just gone into survival mode this year. When I think about everything I've read, I can't get enthusiastic about anything, which is very unlike me. It's not what I expected. So I tried to choose a selection of books that were my favourites of the year. And whilst I didn't have any books I read that I hated, neither did I have any or a big selection of books that I thought, yes, this is what I want to present as my favourites. So I thought I would show you some of my favourite classics instead, and I hope that you don't mind. It has been an extraordinary year, so I'm thinking that it's okay to be a bit different this year. Like I mentioned, I had many grand expectations for what my reading would be like this year. I had lots of classics on my classics TBR that I thought, yes, I'm definitely going to read all of these. I wanted to read more French literature, that was something I really wanted to do. I wanted to read all of these classics that I'd been wanting to read for ages, and basically none of that happened, which has really stressed me out because I talk about classics on my channel, so many of you wanted me to talk about those books, and that had been my intention, and then the pandemic hit and I couldn't read anything. I was basically reading books that just didn't take any of my attention, that I could just lose myself in and didn't have to think about. So all those plans went completely out of the window. <laughs> and I suppose I wanted to talk a bit before I show you any books and what I did read this year. I think I wanted to talk a bit about whether I still love classics. To me that's been a really big question in my mind that I never thought I would consider. Do I still like and love reading classics? Because this year has really really tested me, like really, really tested me. Because if I'm not reading classics, I tend not to be thinking about them. And the thing I love about classics is using those skills of analysis, diving deep into why the author has chosen to write about the subject in that way, why the characters are like they are. When I'm reading a classic, I go all in. I can't just read it and not think about it. My brain is constantly, constantly going. And so this year, when my brain could only think about one thing and that was just getting through to the next day and just trying not to be stressed like I've never felt before. It was just like I couldn't, I couldn't think about reading classics. I couldn't think about losing myself in that world when I wanted to read Victorian classics and usually somebody dies in the book. <laughs> so yeah, that was interesting. I was reading Charles Dickens last night actually and there was a mention of the plague and I was like, I can't take those references lightly anymore because I know what it's like to live in a pandemic situation that consumes all of your thinking. And so my brain has definitely been distracted, so when I have read classics, I haven't been able to give them my all. And then in the last month or so, something really changed for me, and that thing was studying A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens for university, because I'm doing a history degree, but in the first year we also do other arts and humanities subjects, and one of those was English literature, which I haven't studied for a few years, and I was writing about A Christmas Carol for an essay, and suddenly it all came back to me. This is 
is why I love reading classics. This is what I love about books from the past because I was sat there reading back through different extracts from the book, trying to form my argument, thinking about what Charles Dickens was doing in the book to elicit this reaction, trying to think about the story as a whole and I was like yes this is what it is about for me. So it's taken me a good 10 months or so, nine, 10 months to get to that point again. And now I'm trying to slowly ease my way back into my classics reading. This year has really tested me as a person in the things I like and the things I enjoy doing. I haven't been able to do many of them. The ones that I have been able to do, I haven't mentally felt able to do them. And I know that there'll be some of you who feel exactly the same and there will also be loads of you who've read so many classics this year because that's all you can think about but yeah this year definitely has tested me. I feel a very different person coming out of it but I'm beginning to explore those interests again that I love like deep in my soul I love reading Victorian books for example. I've read lots of Edwardian books in the last few months and it's coming back to me that passion I think this year has sucked all of the passion <laughs> out of my soul and that's been really testing but it's coming back. I, I feel like it is and sometimes all it takes is one little thing and then you rediscover that love. So even though I haven't read as many classics as I'd wanted to this year, even though I haven't read the classics that I had wanted to this year, I have read some really good books that I wanted to share with you. These are probably my favourite books that I have read this year. The ones that I remember the most, the ones that just made me feel human again and I really really wanted to share them with you. So as you may know if you have been here a while or have watched back some of my old videos, last year I started reading Edith Wharton and I definitely wanted to continue my Edith Wharton reading into 2020. So I've read quite a few short stories of hers and I've also read two of her novels. So the first classic I read this year was The House of Mirth and I followed this up by reading Ethan Froome. I can't decide which of these I preferred more because The House of Mirth is definitely traditional Edith Wharton in that it's set in old New York, has a heroine as the main character who definitely does not conform to society and the expectations placed on her and she kind of fights this in the book. She wants to conform, she wants to do as she's told and what's expected of her but she just can't. She makes the wrong decisions and things just get harder and harder for her and while I didn't love her character I don't think you have to love a character or relate to them to love a story and I loved where Edith Wharton went with this one. On the other hand Ethan Froome is a very different book. It is set in a remote community, is a much shorter book, it just doesn't feel like your typical Edith Wharton when you read it but I actually really liked it for that reason. You know that this is a tragedy, you know something tragic has happened because of the way that the book and the story is structured but you're not quite sure what that's going to be or how it's going to end and it reminded me of Wuthering Heights in that sense. It is definitely Edith Wharton's ode to Wuthering Heights and as a Wuthering Heights and Emily Bronte fan I of course really appreciated those parts of the story. I talked about this earlier in the year and it was really interesting to see what you all thought of it because many of you studied it at school which I definitely think has clouded your perspective on it. People either love it or hate it and fortunately I really loved it. I would love to read more Edith Wharton in 2021. She's definitely one of my favourite authors now. I love her writing style and even though sometimes her stories are hit or miss, her beautiful way of writing, her beautiful expressions, I just love them and I start reading her books and I kind of go wow these are so amazing how does anybody write like this I'm never going to be as good as this it kind of makes me have an existential crisis but I don't hate it I just think she's such a talent and even though she is a very popular author many people read her books I wish more people would because I really do feel like her books have the mark of a genius and I feel like that sounds like an overstatement but honestly that's that is how I feel. I love her books so much. The other thing that I have done this year with my classics reading is read really underrated authors and I mean so underrated that their books might not be in print anymore, hardly anyone has read them, 
in one case I was one of the first people to rate it on Goodreads because basically everyone has forgotten about these books apart from academics so I've been trying to read uh, lots of papers and people randomly tweeting about these books because I wanted to feel like I wasn't the only person who knew they existed. So I've read loads of underrated authors which I am going to be talking to you more about in the new year but I wanted to share some of them with you now. And the first of those authors that I read this year was a Welsh author called Alan Rain and I read by Berwyn Banks which was so good for a book that has been forgotten to time that hardly anyone reads or talks about anymore. I loved this so much mainly because the place in Wales that she sets her books is where my family is from where I visited ever since I was a small child and feels like a second home so I can imagine the settings I can kind of picture the people and to me that felt very special and comforting and magical and for a book that doesn't get any attention now I was pleasantly surprised by how well it was written she has a very beautiful prose the way you can perfectly picture the landscape and the places that she's talking about. I was also surprised at how much it dealt with, particularly religion and the different denominations of Christianity and how they relate to each other and what it's like to be in these communities where you believe different things and how that impacts on romance because there is a romance at the heart of this book. Towards the end it takes quite um, an interesting very typically late Victorian twist which I didn't hate it was kind of silly by today's standards but it just works very well for a late Victorian book. I'm definitely going to be reading more from Alan Rain now and I've managed to track down secondhand copies of a lot of her books but if you want to read them then it's best to find them online and I'll link in the description to where I read it because I read this on my Kindle on my phone rather than as a physical copy because I couldn't find one beforehand. So if you do want to read Alan Rain it is best to do it online if you are able to. Back in the summer I filmed a reading vlog where I read some of the short stories from Women Who Did which is stories by men and women between 1890 and 1914 which deal with the subject of the new woman. This idea of a woman who is very different to what had come before her, she would ride bicycles, she is very outspoken about politics and science and all these things that women were not supposed to talk about and I haven't read many more of the stories since I filmed that video but I have read quite a few and I loved this so much as a way of finding new authors, finding new voices and stories that I hadn't discovered before. It was so good. So I know quite a few of you picked up your own copy of this after I spoke about it which was lovely to see and I'd love to know if any of you have read any of the short stories in here since I spoke about them. So far it's difficult to see what my favourite was. I'm currently reading a short story by Thomas Hardy called An Imaginative Woman and I love Thomas Hardy as you know. But there were so many and I particularly liked the pairings of them and that you can kind of see that they are responding to each other. In particular in my reading vlog I talked about The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman and Mona Caird's The Yellow Drawing Room so I read them in conjunction with each other which really enriched the reading experience. So I'm, it's difficult to tell. I feel like my favourite so far might have been George Edgerton's a cross line so I'm going to read more from George Edgerton in the next few months I should think. So it's been so good to discover some new authors through this collection. I don't want to say too much about this because I don't want to jinx it, I'm trying to keep it quite close but over the last two months or so I have been writing something new that is set in the Edwardian period. So I've been doing so much research ever since the summer, lots that you haven't seen, that's basically what I've been doing with my spare time when I haven't been working on the third book in my Paper and Heart Society series. I've been researching lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff that happened during the Edwardian period and I've been reading lots of Edwardian fiction which again I've been kind of hesitant to talk about up until now because 
I just wasn't sure if I could do the story justice and I kind of feel like I have in the bits I've written so far so I don't mind talking about that and I don't want to give too much away about what the story is about but I do want to talk about one of the books that I read for research because again I've never seen anyone talk about this on booktube and I thought it was really good so this is A Pair of Schoolgirls by Angela Brazel her surname is spelt Brazil as in the country but she pronounced it Brazzle because I think she just wanted to be a bit fancy and she was one of the biggest children's authors during the Edwardian period. She wrote about school life, she wrote about boarding schools, day schools with Edwardian teenage girls and it's been so interesting to look basically at a predecessor to YA. These books were what every girl was reading during the Edwardian period and it wasn't always acceptable. There were many instances of school teachers, headmistresses in particular, talking about how improper it was for girls to read school stories like this one because they were teaching the girls bad habits and this is quite difficult to talk about what this one is about because basically all of her stories have a similar mould and all of them end up having some kind of inheritance at the end which makes the characters come into all this money or a title or their princesses or something that is just very outlandish and all of the stories feature similar characters you have a similar main character it kind of feels like it fits into a mould but that's what I've loved about it like when I said earlier about not being able to concentrate on anything and not being able to think too deeply about anything in fiction this has been a great antidote to that because you don't need to think about it and I have managed to track down quite a few second-hand copies of her books but again if you want to read some Angela Brazel and find out what Edwardian schoolgirls were reading you're better off going to Project Gutenberg which I'll link in the description which has many of her titles that you can read for free online. I'll be doing more videos in 2021 all about underrated classics and I'm going to be starting off by talking to you about some underrated Victorian authors so keep an eye out for that. I haven't had the year that I had wanted to have, it hasn't been the year that I have expected but there have been some highlights. These books that I've showed you have kept me company, have made me think, have brought back that love of classics that I did feel for a little bit like I had lost and I would love to know what classics you have read this year, how your 2020 reading in classics has been. Please tell me and recommend me some of your favourites. For those of you who don't know and didn't watch my last video, the Classics Community Reading Challenge is back for 2021 so I'll leave all the information in the description so you can join in if you would like to and read lots of classics in 2021. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you soon. Happy reading!